Hi, I'm Seth and I'm a food writer from Sefi.com. Hi, my name is Erica. I'm an actor and MC and welcome to our first episode of Food Finders. We're going to go around Singapore and try the same food at different places and tell you which is the best. And for today's episode, we're going to talk about Hokkien Mee, which I'm super excited about. It's a really underrated hawker dish in Singapore. Uh, Hokkien Mee is apparently one of Zeth's favorite dishes. And what is your criteria for the best Hokkien Mee? Price, obviously. What is the quantity of Hokkien Mee that you actually get? Ingredients as well. Like how many prawns you actually get from your Hokkien Mee. The type <laughs> of noodles as well. The stock wok hay as well. The fried chart uh, flavor that you get from, from the wok uh. itself. So without further ado, let's head to our first location. So we're now at Geelang Lorong 29 Charcoal Fried Hokkien Mee, which is actually at East Coast Road. What's special about this place is that they cook with charcoal. As the owner told us, she said the fire is more ferocious, it's like bigger, more fierce, and they have really high expectations for their chefs. They have to be really skillful in terms of balancing out like the wok hay flavor and like all the charcoal and like mixing the noodles together. It's been hard to hire. <laughs> I think it's mostly like kept within the family. Well, first impressions, obviously, Obviously, we were like, wow, look at this brawn shrimp, what? Uh, it's huge, but it doesn't come with the Hokkien Mee. We actually asked for the $6 one, and then the, this additional prawn that you can add on. To seasonal the, yeah. price, but according to them, they say this was like $45. Usually. But that doesn't believe that. How can this huge ass <laughs> prawn be like? NTUC, this itself would be like $6 probably. Drive it yourself. I mean, if you come back and yeah. you buy this for like $4, $4 well, shit, it's a good deal. <laughs> But apart from that, everything else is still the same except for the prawn. All the noodles and like the sotong, yeah, it's all the same. Just look at the girth of this. <laughs> it's a lot darker in colour. Yeah, darker right? for sure because of the charcoal and yeah. like more wok hay, which you like. Clearly, Zeph cannot wait. I think I added too much lime in one corner. I mean, let's try another <laughs> corner. Not really yummy. I really like this. I enjoy the um, charcoal, like smokiness. It's not as thick, so it's not really overpowering in terms of the sauce. Yeah, I love the chili. The chili is really good. The bihun doesn't really do anything much for me. It does make a difference for me. Like, yeah, you get different textures, right? It's slightly drier, that's still a good balance. I would like it more if it's wetter, but this, this works too. Well. What? what? So now I'm going to peel the prawn. Don't waste the prawn here, I'm going to eat the prawn here. It's like the best hawk. Okay, honestly, I've never had prawn this big before in my life. It's really springy. Like no, it's prime. not. Yes, we right. I had to peel it for him. I would give it like a 5 upon 5. The portion plus the prawn is definitely value for money for me. And it's really delicious. I don't believe them when they say the prawn is 4 to 5 dollars seasonal. Why? But if you come and they sell you this prawn for $5, that would be an incredible deal. I would give this a 4 on 5 but if it is what they said, uh, I would give it like a 5 on 5 Alright, let's go to the next place then. Family trip. Hi! Pretty full already. <laughs> Because you ate the whole plate. So here we are at Tian Tian Lai or Kam Daily, which is in Topayo. This Hokkien Mee is actually going into the third generation now since it opened in 1968. So this is like over 50 years old since the grandfather's era where he first opened a push cart that was like down at the field or something. Normally, apparently the waiting time is about one hour during the peak hour, but we got ours pretty fast because we're here early. They have a number so you can actually like call. Can order in early. Yeah, yeah you can what? pre-order and like what? come and pick it up. I also know that Seth has been here multiple times, so this is not his first impression. This is my real first impression. <laughs> we got the five dollar plate. Yeah, and I think it's pretty worth it for five dollars. Like this is quite a lot. I don't think I can finish it by myself. This is really good. <laughs> like wow. I like how it's really thick and saucy and gooey. This is like a wetter version of Hokkien Mee. Like typically I like the wetter types, so there's a lot more broth. I like this kind of consistency. The stock itself is really flavorful. These guys wake up at 4 a.m. every day to cook the prawn and pork bone stock. Wow! So it's, it's really hard work. I also found out that they make their own sambal. Yeah. Pretty mild. I think it complements. Yeah, but, but it complements the not dish. It's too yeah. spicy as well. Yeah, I thought about pork lard. The pork lard is damn good. Just full of porky flavor. Let me think of another word. You get that burst of oiliness. It makes a huge difference, like fried fresh daily. I think in terms of wok hay, there's like a little bit, but it's like very, very subtle. I think if one five stars, I would give this dish like a, hmm, this is really hard, like four? 
I've been here multiple times. It's pretty consistent. I give like five on five. I, re I really like this store. So this has been really good, but I think we're ready to move on to the next one. Okay, so we're at ABC Market here at Tiong Bahru. I'm very excited to try Tiong Bahru Yishan Fried Hokkien Mee. This is Michelin Bib Gourmet rated. For those of you who don't know what Michelin Bib Gourmet is, basically it's the highest distinction for excellence in terms of value for money for food. No, I've actually not tried it. The queue is too long. Like, it takes on average like one hour. We came at like 4.30, so like there's not much of queue. So we got us fairly quick. The chef is really old. I think he's gonna push like 70 soon. This place has been around for like 40 years. From a push cart all the way into a hawker center. The other like Hokkien Mee stalls you could call in, you could order in advance. They do deliveries, but this stall is like old school. Yeah, just, just got a queue for it, just stand in line. That's the only way you're gonna enjoy this Hokkien Mee. This is a $4 plate. It comes with two prawns and a you know, decent amount of Hokkien Mee. If you look really closely, you can actually see a lot of black specks. This comes from the wok itself. This is definitely a shit ass old wok, man. Years and years of frying. So this is what's gonna give it that, that wok cake. Might not be that healthy, but you know, it's definitely gonna taste good. The chili also looks really interesting. So they add like ikan bilis into the, the chili itself. Here they only use yellow and uh, the thin bihun. The char flavor, the whole wok hey thing is like intense on this, man. The chili is so spicy. Yep. Definitely a lot spicier than the rest that we tried. A bit overcooked on the sotong though. Yeah, but the prawns are really good. I don't know how to feel. I like this. I would say it's pretty good, but I'm not exactly like wowed by it. Do you think like the stock wasn't like rich enough for you? Yeah, because the chili was like wow. The chili kind of overpowers the entire noodles. Does it's it just... deserve a bib gourmand? I think the question is more of like, are there better stalls that deserve the bib gourmand for Hokkien Mee? Which to me, I think yes. But it's still good. The wok and the noodles is great. It wasn't rich enough, I, I agree. I would give it like a, honestly, like a three. Oh a, a shit, five. that's brutal. I'd still give it a four. A four, really? Yeah, I'd still give it a four. Okay, back on the Hokkien Mee Trail. So we're here at New Ubin Seafood. It actually started out about like three decades ago in Ubin itself. This outlet is um, at Chimes actually. And as you can see, it's a little like fancier version. It's a bit nicer, settings a bit, you know, cleaner. For and, aircon. Uh, slightly more up class, but dishes and <laughs> recipes remain the same. Obviously, my first impression was like, wow, it's so huge. Apparently, it's a sharing portion. I think three people can eat this at least. It's $15. Ton of pork lard, as you can see here. It's yeah. like heart attack. Can't wait to dig in. Wow, it smells really good. Not in the like classic Hokkien Mee uh, recipe, but like at New Ubin, they add uh, plow clams, which makes the stock more flavorful, I guess. There's more sweetness to it from the clams. So you can actually taste a lot more of the wok hay flavor. What they do is they fry the noodles just by themselves in the wok first so that creates like a lot of these charred marks and there's pork belly which is um, not common to see in all meat definitely I think it's like a very eggy stock compared to the rest even though there's only like two prawns but I think the bigger size prawns but the addition of pork belly and the clams brings up the value as well I think the downside to this is that you actually have to peel the damn prawn. <laughs> People will probably think like, whoa, $15, that is crazy for Hokkien Mee. But because of the amount, like look at this, so much pork lard, it has pork belly and the stock has clam in it. Definitely worth 15 especially the sharing portion. But in terms of atmosphere, I... I feel a little stressed. Too fancy to have Hokkien Mee. Personally, I prefer going to hawker centers. I love this place, like hawker food in an air-conditioned restaurant. <laughs> I would rate it a 3.5 upon 5. So you rated it down because we're in an aircon no. place? Why? Flavor-wise also, I'm not like a huge fan. Like I wasn't like wowing over it. Like when I first tasted it, I was like, Oh. I still give it four. I like having hawker food in in, in that one. <laughs> it's like the best of both worlds. I think that's pretty much it for this place. You ready to go to the next one? Yep. So we're here at Tiong Baru Market where we're here to try the Hong Hei Fried Sotong <laughs> Say that again. And we're gonna try the Hong Heng Fried Sotong Brong Mi. Yep, this is like... So we're here at Tiong Bara Market. We're here to try the Hong Heng Fried Sotong Prawn Mee. Hong Heng is yet another machine big gourmet prawn noodle. Chef Manfred is the third generation chef. He was actually originally a engineer and he took over from his mother and you know is now frying at the store pretty much every day. You can see there's a perpetual queue at the store. A lot of times they, they sell out and they close earlier. Just come earlier if you just want to try. I, I've been to Tiong Bahru Market quite often but like I've not actually queued for this store before. So this yeah. is a $3 version. Kind of looks very nondescript to me actually. It just looks like any other Hokkien Mee you buy from a random coffee shop. But it's the cheapest Hokkien Mee that I've ever like heard of. I want to say ever but not common, definitely. It's very rare to find Hokkien Mee at $3. Yes. 
but upon closer inspection you can also see like the little black bits getting the whole walkway thing they also have other options which is four dollars and five dollars it's okay lah what i don't really like is they cut the noodles you can see the strands are all really short it yes, affects so the texture i felt like my food was already chewed up before i chewed it I like you like the feeling of like chewing your noodles and like cutting yeah. it the noodles are a bit al dente generally firmer than the yeah. most hokkien mee that we've eaten i don't know there's just something about this mix that um, i'm not a fan of i feel that if i didn't add in the lime and the chili without it i think it'll be quite plain and like bland Very bland for this portion three dollars i mean it's still worth it it's not horrible and like inedible or anything like that it's just so average just <laughs> oh and i don't like how the noodles are firm actually when i eat hokkien mee i like my noodles to be like it's gonna melt in my mouth or something but this one is like i need to use effort and i, I don't i don't like that <laughs> do i think it deserves a bit goman i mean like i think the michelin michelin guide inspectors could try a few more stalls in singapore before they make the decision i give it two out of five <laughs> okay la, like i give i let it pass at 2.5 oh you still pass five. it oh, okay We've come to the end of our Hokkien Mee journey. I'm not gonna eat Hokkien Mee for a very long time. So which was your favorite? Uh, my favorite was definitely the Geylang one. I loved it so much. Like, it was really very good. It was worth the money and very delicious. My favorite was the Topayo one, which is Tian Tian Lai or Come Daily Hokkien Mee. It had the right amount of wetness. The gravy itself was very flavorful. Thanks for watching and let us know what you'd like to see next. Alright, see you next time. Bye! Bye.